Oh hey, I'm drunk on LaCroix and lemonade. So let's start some design drama. Come here. Come here. Welcome to a new episode of Laugh Cry DIY. I'm your girl Katie, and today is very exciting because we are starting a brand new series called Design Drama. I recently put out a call on Instagram and YouTube asking you guys to send me your biggest, your messiest, your most frustrating design drama in your house. So you lovely viewers submitted your spaces, Baguette, my cat, chose them randomly, and today we're gonna walk you through what I would do with your drama. So today's first drama queen is Alicia. She has this room that she needs to keep as a guest room and she also needs to make it her office. She just moved in with her boyfriend and as such, she is facing the biggest trauma that any of us will ever have to deal with in our lifetimes. And that is combining our interior design style and our belongings with another person. And while she leans more my style, colorful, maximalist, her boyfriend's style is more neutral, sad. So for this space, she wants to keep it contemporary but still comfy and cozy and she needs to use it to work. Now, first up, let's talk about contemporary style. Contemporary style is very clean. It's more about kind of blank spaces, streamlined lines. Think of like an upscale hotel room. Now she's gonna clear out most of the furniture. The only thing she's keeping for now are the rug and the bed. We have a shelf on the wall she says needs to stay. We have the AC unit that's gonna stay and obviously the heater. So first things first, I'm gonna do something shocking, something unheard of, something I've never done on this channel before. And that is, I'm gonna paint the room white. I'm purposely doing this because of the elements in the room that we have to work around. By painting the wall white, including the shelf, we're going to clean up the space visually and make those things blend in a little bit more. Again, contemporary design is usually about giving the eye a break, which I can't relate normally. But in this case, I think it's a good idea to help those other elements blend in. And for that same reason, we're also gonna switch this duvet to white. We're gonna keep it light and bright considering it's a smaller space. Alicia says she does have a bed frame that she can add here, but this is the first and probably last time I'm gonna say no bed frame. Now, this does need to function as a guest room and as an office, and the key to making multi-use spaces work is distinguishing the zone. So, we're gonna do something sneaky by doing floor to ceiling curtains that are gonna act as a fake headboard. We're gonna use a matte black rod to introduce black to the space. I'm using Ikea Ritva drapes, which let in light, but they're not totally sheer. I would also put these curtains on little rings so that you can easily move them back and forth when you need to let light in or not. Now, the key to doing this curtains as a headboard trick is to make sure you have a lot of volume in the curtains. You want really beautiful... But we wanna add a fun pop of color to the bed. So I am adding mustard yellow pillows with a fun throw pillow that has a touch of a black geometric pattern in it. It's a nice warm color, it's a minimal pop, and frankly, it is physically impossible for me to design an entirely neutral space, so this is the best you're ever gonna get from me. I gotta refill my drink. Now, on to her desk. Obviously, she needs a desk, and this left corner is the only place to put it. And you could orient your desk to one side of the wall or the other, but I'm actually gonna suggest doing a corner desk. I chose this black and wood pattern, again, because the black is kind of a nice, bold, sophisticated choice. This desk also has storage shelves below, so that kind of maximizes some of her storage space. For her chair, we're gonna go grand, but still comfy, and we're gonna do this nice tufted leather chair. It has channel tufting, which is nice and sleek, but that warm leather is still kind of cozy and homey. Now, sometimes if you have something in a room that's kind of an eyesore or weird, you just kind of have to lean in it or work around it. So I'm actually gonna add one floating shelf kind of asymmetrically underneath. This gives it a little bit of an intentionally staggered look and again, provides a little bit more storage for whatever office supplies she has. Now, last thing, since we took out the nightstand and dresser that was previously there, we did take out some storage. And in a guest room, whether you have linens or if you have guests bringing their luggage, a little bit of extra storage always helps. So we are adding in a black leather bench here, adding a cozy black and white throw. And lastly, if she wants to style it up, I would recommend adding hanging plants and a little bit of greenery to give the space life. And that, Alicia, is your design. It is baguette approved, and I hope it helps. Now, introducing drama queen number two, Michael. Michael's design drama is a classic. Cute bedroom, cute floors, and weird ass nook next to the closet. 
Why didn't they just extend the closet? Why didn't they add a built-in? There are some mysteries in life we'll never know. And we've all been there. We've had a weird nook, a weird corner, a weird something, and it just becomes a weird place where you store boxes and junk and dead bodies. Now, to make matters even more messy, not only is this nook weird, of course, behind it is a cinder block wall. He doesn't want to paint it. You can't nail anything into it. So how can he go on living and bring his slightly eclectic mid-century artsy book gay dreams to life? Now in this weird little space, Michael said he knows he could throw a dresser or a bookcase in there, but he wanted to pitch it to me to see if I could do something more interesting or creative with the space. So when I first saw this space, I thought there were a few things you could do. You could add a coffin. You could also make it a little meditation space. But to be honest, it's pretty petite, but because it is next to the closet, I thought it actually could serve a cute and functional purpose. I think you should make it a little mini dressing room vibe. So first things first, I'm gonna suggest you define the space of the nook. Michael mentioned that he likes books, and I wanted to add some sort of wallpaper to this back. But again, the cinder block can be a little bit tricky. There's texture and you would see the indents of the cinder block if you used any sort of peel and stick wallpaper. This space with its cinder block is a perfect challenge for me because something I don't talk about a lot is the fact that I actually grew up in a basement, a basement with all concrete walls. That's right, growing up, I could not nail a single thing into my walls. I couldn't even really tape something up because you know it was the 90s and scotch tape hadn't evolved yet but I never let that stop me. As you can see, this is my childhood bedroom. So for this makeover, I'm gonna call on my old friend, Poster Tack. It's this little sticky substance that actually sticks to cinder block. And there is a very simple DIY that I do love, and that is using book pages as wallpaper. You can do this in very uniform ways, in overlapped messy ways, and for our purposes, I would say go to the thrift store and find a really cool, beautiful book of prints and cut that up. So I'm going to suggest that you wallpaper that back wall and wallpaper the side walls as well. It defines the space and it feels a little bit more special. Next up, add a standing mirror. This is a great opportunity to thrift something really fun and cool that reflects your personal style. And again, because we wanted to find the space and make it feel special, I would say throw this washable IKEA sheepskin rug there. Makes it feel cozy, makes it feel intentional, and you can throw it in the wash anytime. And lastly, if you're like me, a cheap and very messy hoe, I personally find it very helpful to have hooks around my closet so that I can hang coats, bags, hats, or clothes that are still clean but I need to put it away. So I found these beautiful mid-century hooks on Amazon and you can put those anywhere you want around the area, but I thought it was a nice, simple, classy touch to make the space beautiful and functional. And that is what I would do with this freaky ass nook. As always, you can probably thrift some things, you can source some things from Facebook Marketplace, but I hope this gave you a nice idea of what you could do with the space. And design queen number three is Shonda. Shonda just moved into a new apartment and she is dealing with a very challenging roommate. And by roommate, I mean this giant wall. We love height, we love drama, we love scale. It's tall, it's slanted, it's kind of overwhelming to know what to do with it. She doesn't want to paint, but she is down for a DIY. And while this wall is a pain, the best part about this story is the fact that Shonda is a Barbie core whore. Barbie core is exactly what you think. It is Barbie decor on steroids. She loves the aesthetic of Barbie's dream home, Barbie's beach house. But she wants Barbie, but more sophisticated. And most importantly, she wants a way to figure out how to separate her living room area from her entryway area and do it as though Barbie were in her 30s. So obviously a wall this big is a pain in the ass when it comes to decor because you have so much space to fill and it's slanted, it makes it even more challenging. You could totally do a really dramatic gallery wall and many people have and survived, but you need a lot of frames and a lot of large scale pieces. Otherwise things can feel really dwarfed and that's kind of what's happening right now with the mirrors she has above the TV. Now I do wanna say, she has added this faux green background to the TV, and I actually think this is a genius idea. I think it's a cool way to frame the TV. It is faux, but that works with the Barbie core aesthetic. But right now, everything's just kind of dwarfed. Now if you're not doing a big gallery wall, wallpaper is a really great way to add a big, bold splash of pattern and really grab the eye. But it would take a lot of wallpaper to cover this whole wall, and that would be a lot of labor and a lot of money to do. But there is a more economical and more sophisticated way to get the look of wallpaper for less. And that is by doing 
framed wallpaper paneling. This is where you use wallpaper in any sort of print, but you do it within decorative wall paneling. This gives you a sophisticated look and it lets you use a lot less wallpaper. So we are going to add paneling to the space, but we are also gonna use the paneling to create an interesting shape and really draw the eye to the center of the room, to that living room space. We wanna add a lot of drama, a lot of scale, and we wanna frame that credenza and TV in a really unique way. Are you emotionally ready? Boom. By doing this stair-stepped effect, it's almost like you're creating a headboard for the TV and credenza, but what we're doing is adding a lot of scale, a lot of drama, and filling the space. This is a DIY. You buy molding at the store. It's like eight bucks for eight feet. You have the guys there cut it down for you in the measurements you need. You bring it home, you nail it to the wall, or you can command strip it. Now, as for the wallpaper that she should fill these panels with, Shonda can put anything she wants. One thing to note about Barbie core is that it's a lot of tone on tone. It's a lot of light pink with dark pink, lavender with dark purple, turquoise with blue. So in homage to that, for this wallpaper, I chose full on pink leopard print. Now, to save money, one of my favorite hacks is not even to use peel and stick wallpaper. It's actually to use fabric and liquid starch. You paint liquid starch on the wall, put your fabric over it, paint it again, it dries to the wall and it peels off like nothing. I love this hack because you can use fabric from the store, which gives you a lot more variety than just peel and stick wallpaper. Or you can do my cheap or trick, which is actually using bed sheets. I chose pink leopard print because she can order a full set of pink leopard sheets on Amazon for like 40 bucks. But as I was designing this, I realized <gasps> Shonda actually has textured walls. Now, if your print is very busy, you can kind of get away with wallpapering over textured walls, but if you're afraid to put your wallpaper straight on the wall, another way you can fill those frames is to buy this giant five panel cardboard divider. Cut it up, add your wallpaper to that, or use some spray adhesive and fabric, and then nail or command strip those panels to the wall. Sometimes I can't even believe my own genius. Now, if you're gonna do a big project like this and you've never done wall paneling before, I would recommend experimenting with just one panel and one frame, just to make sure you don't hit any moments of hell and that all your measurements are right. Now, Shonda didn't ask for this, but if you wanna add a little bit more Barbie Beach House vibe, I would also add some palm trees, real or faux, just to add some greenery, add some fun, add some symmetry to the space. Now we know I'm a budget bitch and we know I love repurposing and I actually do love the faux greenery and the mirrors she had in the space before, but I wanna make them more of a moment. So what I'm gonna recommend is actually moving those to the entryway, cutting them into an arch shape, repurposing those mirrors to embed them into the greenery. And it looks like the bench is blue. So if you're feeling very extra, very dramatic, very bougie, I would even reupholster the bench in like an aqua velvet to add some glamour and to give it that tone on tone look with the blue base. And that my dears is the end of our design drama. I hope you guys found this helpful. This was so fun to do. Thank you so much to my sweet, beautiful, cheap queens, Alicia, Michael, Shonda. And please let me know if you like this style of video. I will gladly do it more. I will have all products mentioned linked down below. And until next time, just remember, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make best friends. Love you guys, bye.